Welcome to more Fanime. Hey everybody, today I'm going to be reviewing chapter 1067 of the One Piece manga. This chapter was really good. Uh, just saying it straight up. I, I, it's not my favorite chapter since post Wano. No, not at all. But it was really good. It was fun. It was interesting to actually see the original Vegapunk be a big part of it. Uh, I, I'm kind of not into Vegapunk's tongue thing, or he's always got his tongue out. This, I, I can't can't talk like that. Like, is this how he talks? If he talk like uh, Pero Sparrow, I mentioned it in my last video. Honestly, if um, Vegapunk doesn't end up being Pero Sparrow's father, I, I really don't like the tongue look, especially since another character has already got that. It's like there better be some kind of weird connection with that character and this character. Ugh. But regardless, chapter 1067 was a good day. We got to see in the cover story more stuff. I really thought that this cover story, the Germa 66 excursion, was over. But no, 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 no. More shit's happening. We're seeing uh, Caesar going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Judge Sanji's father. And you see the other members of Germa 66 just watching like, we have no emotions, so we don't care what you do, Dad. But if you want us to kill this guy, we will. I'm not sure if they can, actually. Do, do the Germa 66 members actually have hockey at all in any way, shape, or form? Because without it, I don't think they can hit uh, Mr. Gastino himself, uh, Caesar. Uh, but either way, it looks like Judge and Caesar could have a little bit of a background since, you know, Judge worked with Vegapunk, Caesar worked with Vegapunk. I'm not sure, was Caesar part of Mads like Judge and uh, Queen were? Or was Caesar added to Vegapunk's crew later, his squad of uh, scientists and whatnot? Shut up, shut up. No, uh, Caesar, I do hope does, you know, work his shit out with Judge. I hope they do become one. I hope Caesar allows, not Caesar, I hope that Judge allows Caesar to join Germa 66, be part of the scientific, uh, shit they do there. I would even be not surprised, I would not be surprised if Caesar and Judge end up being the new head scientists for the world government. Because remember, this cover story is taking place a little bit before what's going on currently in the manga, at least from what we can see with Kuzan and Agar that happened a few uh, weeks back. So this shit happened earlier. So there's a good chance that the, the government has already talked to Caesar. They've already talked to Germa 66. They were like, hey, we want to get rid of Vegapunk. He's kind of being a bit of an issue. And we're thinking he's betrayed us. So, it's hard to get rid of the smartest man alive. But, how about the next best thing? Germa 66, Judge Caesar. You guys, join the world government. You can be the official main scientist. You can take over Egghead Island and... All of the research that Vegapunk has is yours. You just need to, you know, swear allegiance to the world government. And I don't know if Judge, you know, he did promise to stay away from the East Blue. Probably will commit to that. But maybe be, being part of the world government, getting all them funds to do his science, even though he's not as smart as Vegapunk, he can still provide a lot, especially after reading all the research that's there on Egghead Island. I would not be surprised, and this is my theory, possibly. Caesar and Judge have taken over and have joined the world government, and they're the reason why the world government feels like they can kill Vegapunk now. We'll have to wait and see. I hope it's the truth, because I think that'd be sick. I think it doesn't make sense for 66 to join Luffy on their side of the war. I think it makes sense to start building some soldiers on the world government side, on the Tenry Beto side. Uh, you know, jo join. Join up, baby. Be a part of the, 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 the legion of evil, essentially. Uh, it kicks off, though. We get to see Vegapunk. This chapter officially, we in Egghead Island, this Egghead arc, we get to see Vegapunk talking to Luffy and Bonnie, and he's just like, this is fate. I feel like this is fate that you're here on Egghead Island. Luffy, will you please, 
please take me off of this island. And I don't know why. We don't know why he wants to leave. I guess because he knows his, you know, his life is going to be ending soon if he doesn't get the hell out of here. Maybe he's a little scared. He, he might have predicted, you know, being so smart. We've already seen that he told Dragon, hey, I'm going to be killed soon. But now that he realizes, oh, wait a minute. The Straw Hats are here. Dragon's kid is here. Bonnie and fucking Kuma's kid is here. Maybe they can get me out of Dodge and we can just get on the road. I'll become a pirate. I think at this point, Vegapunk being a secret revolutionary this whole time, that that uh, that that whole gimmick has run its play, you know, run its course, as they say. Uh, he could become an actual revolutionary now. He can leave the world government. He can. He's done a lot of science, and it's time to move on, buddy. The real revolution has begun, as said uh, by Ivankov as the at the end of this chapter. But before Luffy can say shit, before they can actually have this full conversation, Bonnie's like. <laughs> and lights her lightsaber and is like, hey, Vegapunk, you're going to fix Kuma? You're going to give him back his humanity? Or I'm going to cut your head off, buddy boy? And Vegapunk's like, whoa, 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 wait, 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 Bonnie, 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 you need to listen. And even uh, Jinbei's like, hey, uh, wait a minute there, I'm, I'm Jinbei, and um, if you kill Vegapunk, you're going to have a lot of enemies, Bonnie, really think about this. I get why you're mad. Um, but before Vegapunk can even explain anything, he's just like, that's a failed experiment. Please turn off the lightsaber. And she's like, no, I've already used it. I've already cut some stuff. And I have no problem cutting your head off just like you cut your top of your head off, cut your brain out, which I haven't even talked about yet. She gets swarmed by bugs. Uh, so I guess this, this lightsaber is a failed experiment i guess it attracts an abnormal amount abnormal amount of bugs and it just completely knocks bonnie out very reminiscent of when um perona not gets knocked out when um usopp pulls up the giant hammer and she's like whoa, 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 whoa. very much like that uh or was it the bugs that knocked her out i can't remember either way she's foaming from the mouth chopper be doctoring uh, Vegapunk does explain why his head is now an apple. It's essentially an antenna that's connected to Vegapunk Records where his real brain is. He's got this massive brain is bigger than a giant's head. And it's sitting at the top of basically Egghead Island's punk records thing and consistently growing and growing and growing because... Vegapunk ate the brain brain fruit, and now he's a brain man, but he was already a genius, so that kind of helps. I really didn't want him to be a devil fruit user, per user personally, but the brain brain fruit doesn't t necessarily make Vegapunk any smarter. It just gives him the brain capacity to remember every single thing he's ever learned. The drawback is his head grows bigger and bigger and bigger. I mean, what are the odds? The smartest man alive ate the brain brain fruit. Is it something the government had and knew exactly what fruit it was and was like, hey, I bet it looks like a fucking brain with a stem on it or like a brain apple. But, um, uh, and then gave it to Vegapunk like, hey, we know you're super smart. We know that you're a great scientist. We will not only give you funds, we're going to give you the brain brain fruit, which will only be useful for a great scientist like yourself. We'll give you that, you eat it, you become the brain brain man, and then your head's just going to grow and grow, and your knowledge is going to grow and grow. It's going to be great for you, great for us. Let's do it. And, I, and maybe Vegapunk will be like, yeah, the brain brain fruit, that makes total sense. Let's rock it. Um, I recently listened to Rogers Bass's uh, review of the last chapter, and they mentioned that they thought that there's a good chance that Vegapunk could be an alien, because I guess the flag for the, the alien pirates that were in Enel's cover story had a big brained creature on the front of it as the skull and crossbones situation. So I was actually pretty hyped. I was like, wait a minute. Is Vegapunk an alien? That shit would have made me so excited and hyped. But the fact that he's just another Delafruit user did kind of take the wind out of my sails. 
It's still cool that he's born a genius. I would like a little more explanation than just, I was born smart. But maybe we'll get that. I mean, we just met the gay. We just finally got to see all the satellite bodies. We finally got to see all the different uh, versions of Vegapunk and himself. Young and old. Giant head and apple. We've seen it all. Now we just got to hear the tale. We need to see the sad backstory for this, this old man. This a senile, old, crazy man. Vegapunk does explain why Momo's fruit is considered a failure, even though he was a perfect copy of uh, Kaido's devil fruit. The only issue with the, 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 the artificial devil fruit was the fact that it was pink, and the fact that Momo became a pink dragon. And uh, he really wanted a perfect copy, a perfect coffee. He wanted it to be blue. He wanted it to be a blue dragon. Even Luffy's like, what's the problem with a uh, pink dragon? He's just like, Jinbei's like, I guess he's a perfectionist. And I, that's kind of the story we're getting here. He's a bit of a perfectionist. But it blows my mind that he spent all these resources creating this artificial devil fruit, a very powerful zone devil fruit. How many other, you know, failed devil fruits did he create? Can he create more? Can he make another comp copy of a devil fruit? Because that shit seems insane. These are magical fruits that are, we still don't know where they come from. We don't. And I want to know. Maybe Vegapunk knows. I mean, he's got the giant, the biggest brain in the world, and he wants to connect everybody to this brain, by the way. But even Jinbei's like, but everybody has different ideologies that could conflict with each other. And he's like, well, too bad. In the name of science, I want everybody to add things to my brain, and we should all connect to it kind of like the internet. It's, it kind of would be if everybody could plug in with an apple hat and plug into It's funny that it's an apple, too. Um, connect to the giant brain and have a complete library of information. <laughs> Chopper has a hilarious moment where he gets the, the Sanji heart eyes and he's like, does that mean like you have doctor knowledge that I can study using this brain of yours? And he's like, of course. And just, he's like floating away on little jet boot, the Dom boots. And he's like, ooh wee, that sounds so cool. That was actually a really cute Chopper moment that I personally enjoyed. And um, let's see, what did I miss there with the old convo with, I think that was it, with Vegapunk. He's just like, please, Luffy, take me off this island. Bonnie, I need to give you something. Bonnie's completely knocked out right now, but mentions the fact I need to give Bonnie something. Of course she wants to kill me for what I did to Kuma. She doesn't know the whole story. I think the issue is Kuma didn't explain shit to her, and maybe should have. Maybe she didn't want to, he didn't want to put her in danger, so maybe that's why. Didn't want the world government to find out that it is a farce, that he was a spy. We go back to the rest of the crew, except for, you know, Zoro and Brooke, who are currently on the Thousand Sunny. I really want to know what their whole part in this arc is. Like, did Oda just write Zoro and Brooke out? Even though earlier in this arc, we got to see Zoro be an absolute badass when he challenged uh, the evil Lilith. He's like, hey... Zoro can cut your head off 10 times, uh, twice on Tuesday if you don't back down Lilith. That was an epic moment. But now Zoro's sitting on the ship drinking tea with Brooke doing absolutely nothing. Brooke never gets any mo moments anymore, it feels like to me. He didn't even get to sing uh, in, um, in One Piece Film Red. It's just been slightly disappointing that our boy Brooke hasn't had a moment. And I'm sure it is coming. I know it's coming. Uh, obviously, he's going to go back and see the giant whale. But I, Brooke is a great character. I mean, think about all he did at Whole Cake Island. Let's give Brooke a little bit of a bone here. Zoro always gets attention, so I get it. Write him off the arc for a hot minute. Let him protect the sunny Fine. We get to see Frankie, though, and the rest of the crew watching Luffy and uh, Vegapunk talk on like a monitor. They explain that the giant robot thing that we saw in the last arc, the giant ancient 900-year-old robot that came from the Void Century, the Iron Giant, essentially, uh, attacked Mary Joa 
200 years ago, right around the same time that the Fishman Rights Movement started happening, which I forgot about. Uh, I guess it was mentioned at Fishman, the Fishman Island arc that there was an incident that happened 200 years ago that started to give, in, give Fishman um, rights. They started to have humanity. They weren't treated like they were just animals any longer. And I'm starting to think maybe... The fishmen were the ones to take down this giant Robert back 200 years ago. And the world government was like, fine, fine. We can consider you half people or something. They still, you know, allow slavery at like Sabaody and probably other places. And of course, at Marijoa, they still allow that. And that's ridiculous. They still have discrimination. Yes, they're a part of the reverie and what not. They're part of the kingdoms of, uh, you know, one piece. But that's not enough. They need equality. And something happened 200 years ago involving them and this giant 900-year-old robot. No one knows why this robot scaled the red line and attempted to kill, I think. We don't know its exact goal, but they were scared. They were very scared. Maybe it was one of the ancient weapons. That's a good theory, actually. It could have been one of the ancient weapons, and maybe its goal was to destroy the red line. That could come up later. Uh, but I guess the fishmen stopped it. Somebody stopped this thing. It must have been tough as all nails. Tough as a nail. Whatever. Uh, this robot is completely inoperable. They don't know how it ran. Like, they don't know what fuel it ran on. Even Vegapunk can't figure it out. Even Frankie's like, what? You're saying there's something that even you, Vegapunk, can't figure out? What if it turns out this robot runs on cola? <laughs> That shit would be amazing if this thing ran on soda, just like everything else that that Frankie uh, has built, including himself. If if they find out they just need to put a barrel of cola in this thing and it starts moving around, I, I guess the Vega Force One robot was designed based on this, but it has a completely different power source. It must be just gasoline or something. So the idea uh, of this giant robot being operable again would be fucking sick. I would love to know more about the Void Century just like all of you. And I feel like this robot, this ancient robot, is a big part of that. Um, from there, we get to see Rob Lucci, Rob Gucci, the man, the myth of the legend, and CP0 finally arrive on Egghead Island. They're standing there wearing their CP0 masks, which just look tough. Oh, heck. But it's obvious who they are, even, even the Vegapunks. Well, I guess they would know, since they're part of the world government. Is it Rob Lucci? Lilith says. Let him in. He could take care of these pirate scum that we have here. I am starting to think maybe Lilith could turn on the Straw Hat crew at any fucking second since she is the evil Vegapunk. Every member of these Vegapunks are different parts of the personality of the original uh, copy of Vegapunk. They are clones of Vegapunk as said by the original Vegapunk. Sorry, I said Vegapunk way too much. I won't say it again. But they're clones. And when he says it, there's a really funny gag. I, ah, please go look at this part. It's hilarious. You can see Luffy doing the, 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 uh, the what do you call it? The Naruto hand sign saying like, are you a ninja? Because he has clones. It's a total Naruto reference. Highly, I, it's, you can blink and miss it. Like it's such a tiny little block of seeing him doing the nin, nin, nin that they did back at Wano. Uh, when they met the ninja lady. But the idea that the first thing he said when he heard clones was, are you a ninja? Just was like, okay, Oda, I see what you did there and I appreciate it. You badass, you. Like, uh, that's so cool that he's willing to reference, you know, Naruto as a, you know, as a rival of his back in the Dizay, even though it's sunk into nothingness with Boruto. I'm not even going to get into that whole bag of worms. Um, the crew is told, at least not Luffy, but the Sanji crew that's all there with uh, Robin and whatnot. They're like, hey, Luchi's here. Uh, CP0 is here. Kaku's here. Stussy's here. I am curious if Jabra is with them or the uh, Chapapa guy that fought 
Frankie back at Wa any Slavi. I, I am curious if they're with them. I hope they are because we did recently get to see Bluna. We did recently get to see Califla. We have seen Span Dam at Film Gold. We saw these characters in movies, but we haven't seen them in the series proper. I would love personally, love to see Span Dam being uh, told what to do by Lucci all the time, like just being his little bitch boy. That would be amazing because I, I think Spandam is a really good villain and he he holds my favorite sword in the entire series, Funkfried. Mm. Maybe there is hope that one day Zoro will lose another sword and he will pick up the blade of legend. Zoro will have a zone fruit on his hip. Could you imagine Zoro running around with the Funkfried sword? Oh my god. God, even if he has a fourth sword, just I, I, I still wish because Zoro loses a sword at the end of any sloppy, it gets rusted away by the rust rust fruit fella. I still wish Luf Zoro picked up the funk freed sword and it was like, huh, why not? Shing! And then had a zone fruit sword from this point on, and then had crazy elephant attacks and had a bond with the funk freed, which is a living being essentially. It's like, hey, we're gonna be buddies now. And, you know, maybe makes Funkfried even more badass than he already, already was. But no, you know, that probably won't happen, sadly. But I love, I'm going to say it again, I love the Funkfried sword. And I would love to see it again in the series. I don't think we've seen the last of Spandam. And I do hope he's currently with the crew. I hope Jabra's there as well. I want to see that they're all well and okay. Or I want to find out why the fudge... Did Lucci and CP's, CP9 rejoin the crew after that entire amazing cover story where they did uh, separate themselves from the world government? They were hunted down by the world government and they're like, peace, we'll see you again. And eventually at some point during the time skip, something happened. Something major happened with Rob Lucci and CP9. They are somewhat of an adopted family. I don't think Rob Lucci would kill the members of his of CP9. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he had to like sacrifice Jabra and the Chapapa guy as a as a, a trade. Or maybe they were killed by someone like Kazaru. And Kazaru told um maybe Kazaru beat the shit out of Lucci and was like, you got one choice, buddy. Rejoin the the group, rejoin the world government, or I gotta kill you, just like I did your friends here. Wolf boy's done, Chapapa is done. You and the rest of CP9 have an option. Join back up the world government. We'll even put Spandam on your team. You could fuck with them all day long. That kind of shiz is what I want to find out. I want to know what happened. Why would Lucci go back to somebody, uh, go back to the government who left them? Left them high and dry after failing one freaking time. There's got to be an explanation. I really hope Oda doesn't just completely write off that cover story that happened so long ago. It's one of my favorite cover stories. And uh, the CP9 are one of my favorite villain groups in the entire series. Right behind... Um, Baroque works. Like, they are fantastic. Their fights at Annie's Lobby were so much fucking fun. There's a reason Annie's Lobby is my favorite arc in the entire series. I want to see all of them together again. And I, I still think there's a good chance that Rob Lucci has secretly infiltrated the CP, you know, cipher pole is pretending to be part of the world government. Uh, please comment down below. Let me let me know what you think. Uh, maybe not, because in this chapter he mentions, hey, Bonnie has been seen at Egghead Island. Uh, she's kind of a brat, and we've heard she has been, I'm assuming, used to keep Kuma as part of the government or some shit. I don't know, but he mentions like she escaped from um, escaped from the Marines multiple times. Her use has ran out. And I, I, I'm going to kill her the next time I see her. This is all words from Rob Lucci's mouth. So maybe Rob Lucci is just a psychopath. He doesn't give a shit. Maybe he did kill Jabra and Chapapa guy. And, and force the rest of CP9 back into the gang. Back into the world government. And was like, hey, we got a sweet gig here. We'll fuck around with Spandam. 
Let's go. Maybe that shit did happen. Maybe he is ruthless as all heck. Maybe he will go doe to doe with someone like Zoro or Luffy again. We'll have to wait and see. Sanji mentions in this chapter, hey Robin, I don't care how many times, Robin Chan, I don't care how many times Rob Lucci keeps coming back, I will protect you every single day. That made me excited. That made me very excited. If we get to see Sanji versus Rob Lucci, ooh buddy. If you also remember at uh, any slobby, Sniper King or Usopp challenged Rob Lucci to a fight and said, I'll fight you, cat boy. Get away from Luffy. Maybe, you know, a lot of people say that uh, Usopp's lies will come true. So what if Usopp is the one to fight Rob Lucci and just gets his absolute shit kicked in or maybe wins? I mean, Rob Lucci is good, but... Usopp has some advanced uh, observation hockey that hasn't really been developed yet in the story yet. So seeing them go against each other would be very fun. Maybe he can launch a couple sniper shots and hit where Rob Lucci's gonna be when he's using Shave. I'm, I'm just really excited. I'm so excited that CP0 is here and we're finally gonna see some battle in here. If Rob Lucci is the main villain of this arc, I'm down. Totally down, even if it's just a few battles, we have Stussy and Robin fight, and Kaku and Zoro fight, and Luffy go he- going against Luchi again. I'm here for it. How many times has Luffy go- fought a-, a villain again? Like, they keep living on and keep doing different things. I mean, the only time I can remember is when Luffy fought Crocodile like three times and lost two of those battles. Oh my god, speaking of Crocodile, we haven't even seen Cross Guild in forever. We haven't seen Law versus Blackbeard for weeks now. Like, I'm really starting to get to the point where I think that Oda's just going to write off the rest of the battle between Blackbeard and Law, and we're just going to have to wait for the next six months before we find out. Like, he really could make us wait all the way until Egghead Island is over before we even get to check back in with Law. Or we might not see him for a while, for like two arcs. We might jump into back seeing what uh, Augustus Kid, uh, Eustace Kid is doing. I would love, love to see Kid and Killer get some more development in this story. I don't care if we see them at Elbaf. I don't care if we see them at some random island. I don't care if Luffy runs into them stranded. Maybe their entire crew, except for Killer and Kid, were slaughtered by Blackbeard uh, or, or, or uh, anybody else, by Shanks. I don't care. I just want to see Kid get some development. Kid hasn't got enough of development. Law has taken all the spotlight as part of the worst generation, not including the Straw Hat crew. Kid has so much potential to be basically the Gara. He can cr- control metal. He can bring metal out of the earth. His development of his devil fruit could just advance to a point where he's at a point where he can go toe to toe with someone like Luffy, even in Gear 5. That would be a fun little battle, honestly. Totally here for it. Yes, I know Kid's an ally. We want to keep him as a good gay, but maybe they both show up. At the One Piece at some point, and they fight each other. I don't know. Either way, um, so this this whole chapter ends with uh, Kuma, of all people. Kuma's there, running, starts to get up and run from the Revolutionary Army, and you see Ivankov and uh, Dragon going, where are you going, Kuma? We're trying to repair all the damages that the Celestial Dragons did to you. Like, you're not fully here right now. I know you're brain's completely gone, but where are you going? Something must have triggered Kuma to start running. There's got to be something. I guess Dragon can't completely control Kuma like we thought. Like, there was an idea that maybe Vegapunk programmed Kuma to listen to the Celestial Dragons and Monkey D Dragon, but I don't think that's the case anymore. Maybe, Maybe he's running back back to the Celestial Dragons. I hope not. Maybe he's running back to Bonnie. 
Maybe whatever Vegapunk wants to give Bonnie is the thing that's commanding Kuma. Or maybe it's Kuma's brain or something to trigger Kuma back into being himself again so that we can have that touching moment of father and daughter reuniting once again. That's the kind of shiz I want to see in this story going forward. That's my theory. That's what I think Vegapunk wants to give her. Other option is maybe a video, which would, could be super sad. Kuma's, you know, humanity could be completely lost permanently. We, we, we have no idea. So maybe Kuma recorded a little bit of a goodbye, so long, farewell video for Bonnie, his daughter, to watch. Be like, hey, you know, we're from a special people and I'm the only one that can do this. I'm the only one whose body can be transformed into a crazy cyborg and you know cloned into an army for the government to eventually turn on the government i have to do this i have to sacrifice my humanity but i love you um you'll probably never talk to me again but i'm glad you're still alive and you're watching this video i gave it to vegapunk to eventually give to you that's the kind of stuff that's the kind of feels that oda's gonna give us one day and i'm i'm here for it i'm here for CP0 being back. I'm here for Vegapunk finally explaining what's going on with Kuma. We also get to see the Seraphim Kuma, who has his white hair now, and the black wings, and the, 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 uh, the, uh, what do you call those fuckers? The Lunarian skin, all that. Uh, he, Oda has fixed Kuma or Seraphim Kuma. There's something going on here with Seraphim Kuma, original Kuma, Pacifista Kuma. Ugh. This is more fanime. What did you think of chapter 1067? What did I miss? What are you guys waiting to see happen next? Comment down below. Let me know. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll talk to you later. The pirate whose eye is on it, he'll sing. I'll be king of the pirates. I'm gonna be king. His name is Luffy.